All right, y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. We're gonna do more of a fun video today, and it's also with the food scraps that we harvested from that pig the other day. Now, this is one pig, and that's every bit of 40 pounds. Now, we've talked in the past about how we feed our dogs essentially uh, food scraps, surplus eggs, and remember, you don't have to pay for your eggs if you're using that chicken tractor on steroids. We're gonna talk more about that in the future, but we're gonna take some of these things like this heart there's liver, and there's more of it down there, and there's also kidneys down in here. Now, in a nutshell, let me just go ahead and tell you right off what we're gonna do. Like I said, this will go off to the side. Now, this big stuff, this is this is back fat. Remember, there's three fats on the pig. You got your you got your back fat, you got your leaf lard, which is by the kidneys. Best fat on the pig, if you ask me, especially for pastries, and then everything else is pretty much your back fat. Now, the reason why this stuff is in here is because it was on the outside, and as we were processing this thing outside, we would get a little dirt on it. Now, I'm not gonna put it in my grind pile, but I can do a lot of cool things. In the past, we've done, we've actually taken this stuff and given it to chickens, but I'm gonna basically make it in bite-sized doggy pieces like little Chloe over here. She'll eat this stuff. Sit, Chloe. There you go. <laughs> So Kendra's back there filming me, and of course, she thinks it's the cutest thing in the world when <laughs> this little doggy is eating food scraps. Now remember what I said before in that previous video when we were processing the pig. A lot of this stuff would either go in the trash or just be downright stolen from you in a lot of processors. Now, we got special plans for these guys. I am going to do nothing more. This is where, now let me back up. If I'm doing a cow, there's a lot of cool things on a cow where I can take and like the sinew and stuff like that, I will either dry or freeze dry for the express purpose of making dog treats, training treats, whatever you need out of it. But things like the heart and the lungs, these are the things dogs love absolutely most. And if you ever watch, you know, wild dogs and stuff, well, look at what the alpha male eats first. He's basically going to, while everybody else is eating all the stuff on the outside, they're eating the things that are vitamin rich, like this liver like this heart, like the lungs, all those different things. That's what the alphas eat first. So let's just try a little piece of it here. This is a piece of heart. Chloe, you want some heart? I guess the answer is a profound yes. But here's the cool thing we can do with these. Instead of just putting it in the mix with everything else, we're gonna go through this whole process. We're basically gonna slice this up and we're gonna stick it in a freeze dryer. These will be exclusively dog treats. This will be dog treats. Food. And we find out that when we feed them this way, where when you feed them that dry uh, food, you're gonna find out that you got dog patties all over your yard and stuff like that. When we feed them this way, one of the first things that we've learned when doing it is that you can almost not find their excrement within a week or two. So is it really good for the dog? We also know that they need a lot less of it. So it's this combined with a few other things and we're gonna cover that in a minute. All right, there you have it, about 25 pounds of the highest quality dog food on planet Earth. And keep in mind, this is stuff that would not would have ordinarily been thrown away by your butcher. This is why you wanna do it at home. All right, next step. I'm gonna put one of these in this fridge and the rest go into the freezer. All right, y'all, so it's the next day and we got a bunch of dog treats right here. Well, hang on, hang on. Thuggy here, the cat, Michelle's little, she couldn't stand cats. And this cat was as feral as Bill Clinton on Epstein Island. And now she's hugged up with her 24 seven. So anyway, little Thuggy's over here or everybody calls her Ginger. I can't just, I can't bear to call another animal around here some little girly name. Let's see if you like it. 
Yeah, I guess she ain't have it. But I know some of the other ones are, so check this out. Couple of mistakes here, but really I've come over the last couple of, or year or so to realize that this freeze dryer is probably one of our best tools for so many reasons. But here's one colossal mistake. I got some fat in here. That ain't cool because it makes your stuff go rancid and it really doesn't work out so well. But I guess I should have paid better. I know I should have paid better attention, but there you go. These fatty pieces, those are gonna basically get put off to the side or they can eat those immediately. But here's what we do. In the past, we basically put them in a dehydrator, but that's really, I mean, the, the cool thing about this freeze dryer is that we stick them in this bag and then we just leave them somewhere, you know, in her little doggy closet, which Michelle certainly has a couple of them around here. We'll put all these in here. But we'll go out there here in a minute and see how much my little puppy loves these things, but they love everything you see here. So just like that, with a fancy handy dandy freeze dryer, if you don't have one, like I said, we've done it before with a dehydrator and that'll work absolutely fine. But you keep more of its nutrition when you're able to put it in something like a freeze dryer. So if you need one, we got those down below, but let's go ahead and make up a bowl. We'll give you chapter and verse exactly how we do it when we go ahead and feed these guys to breakfast and dinner, as Michelle calls it. Nala, come here. Sit. Yeah. Explain how weird Nala is first, though. Yeah, this, this dog, Michelle's little... Fox. <laughs> yeah, her little fox that looks like a science experiment, looks like Dobby on Harry Potter. Yeah, so she almost, you have to make her eat. But even she'll eat it. Let's go try my puppy. Milk boy, sit. Doggy treats. All right. Now that I have her attention and with the very best dog treats on planet Earth, no doubt about that. Just a little side note. I have this box tub full of shanks. These are all pork shanks. Well, I don't need pork shanks right now. What I need is breakfast sausage. Come here, Chloe. I don't, I need breakfast sausage, which I got thawing out right here. So this is cool. When you do all this stuff yourself, y'all, you can do everything you, as you need it. That's why I leave my cuts big. But let me get back to it. Okay, so a morning regimen of dog food. Okay, if you got kibble, that's fine. You can still do it with this, but everybody has been asking, chapter and verse, how do we feed our animals? How do we feed our dogs in particular? Well, with Chloe and her size, this is what a typical day looks like. These are eggs that came from our chickens, and they're in a bowl that William carved. So there's one egg, and take a look at these yolks. You ain't getting this from no Circle K eggs, I guarantee that, okay? Now, over here, now there is gonna be some debate on whether or not you should cook this first or whether you shouldn't, but really, this is about all she needs. Um, and we do this twice a day. Now, invariably, there's gonna be a number of people saying, well, what do I do for my dog that are this size? Well, we base it on their conditioning, on their body conditioning. Um, so for Milk Boy, he's gonna get four eggs and he's gonna get a fair amount of this. Chloe, she's smaller, probably a third his size, so she's gonna get considerably less. Now, some people say, oh, you shouldn't give them raw eggs. Well, we've been doing this for years and we've been doing this for years. We give it to them raw, you can cook it, there's really no harm either way. So, let's see if she'll like it. You sloppy little doggy. Look at how sloppy this dog is. Look, how beautiful is that? So I'm not gonna film again because she's over here smacking this stuff up. But look, in like record time, we'll just go ahead and wait. All right, I think you got most of it, Chloe. There you go. So that's even the left letter at that much. Okay. Point being, right now is you can save a pile of money right now. I remember being in Tractor Supply the other day, and you can give them kibble if you want. But I sure did notice that in Tractor Supply, the dog food that was once forty pounds, the latest bags were uh, thirty-five, and for the same, actually for more money. So it's only gonna get higher. So, <laughs> you like this? Is that good stuff? You like that, Chloe? Hey! Anyway, <laughs> um, if you wanna go ahead and keep doing kibble, that's fine. 
but you can lean way, way back on it when you feed them this way. And for those who are saying, well, how long have you been doing it? We've been doing this for a long, long time. I'm talking years, probably over a decade now. And we got this great idea. I want to give a shout out to whom it's due. Dr. Joel Wallach was the one who initially gave us the idea to doing this. And he's, of course, a veterinarian and naturopath doctor, but we've taken a lot of good cues from him. So look, here's what I'm trying to get at, y'all. In these times where you have, I'll go ahead and stand up, and I'm going to take her bowl with me. In these times where eggs are starting to cost a fortune, just the other day we had another egg place burned down, okay? Sound like a coincidence to you? Anyway, you can raise these for free with methods we have already taught you, and we're going to talk more about it in the chicken tractor on steroids. Go check out that playlist if you want to know how to do it. All this absolutely free when you raise your own pigs using the methods we use. We're going to talk more about that in the future because I think the crunch of this inflation and everything else is only going to get worse, but you can insulate yourself from all of it when you know how to process your own meat, make your own sausage, make your own bacon, make your own dog treats, grow your own eggs, and grow your own pork. How about that? And right there, look at that. Doesn't she look like a happy little puppy? All right, y'all. Hopefully this has been a blessing to you. If you need anything from us, check out the description box down below. If, go check out the website. Hopefully, I know a lot of people are asking about bone sauce and comfrey. Comfrey, we should have back in stock by the end of March. And bone sauce, I'm hoping to get working on it by the end of the week. All right, y'all. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And everything you see here are the reasons why. We'll see you next time.